you know, what happened is, what I learned today is that I paid thousands of dollars to learn how to invest, and they did, never taught me about tax advantage. They would stop me at tax later. So I never got the advantage. And I didn't even pay for this class today. <laughs> and I, I lost all thousands of dollars today. I would say this, I paid thousands of dollars for this class today. Many of you said that you wanted me to continue to unpack here from watching this video, the four homes of money, to continue to unpack the three tax buckets. So that's what we're gonna do here in this video, starting three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from the Seven Figure Squad studio here in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. And tonight, we actually opened up our office here for a little small workshop here. Everybody's socially distanced, got masks on, got sanitizers on, but people want to connect, people want to get together. And we opened up our office here to actually do a live workshop here to share the three tax buckets because people want to say, hey, how do we get this broken down so therefore we can understand it, we can explain it, we can implement it, and obviously we can manifest whatever we got going on in our savings and our financial future for 2021. I also want to say this, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not an investment advisor, I'm purely just educating people what they need to be asking people on, on three major areas, which not only includes losses, the fees they pay and the things to mitigate, but also more importantly tonight, we'll be discussing the three tax buckets, tax now, tax later, tax never. So here's one of our workshops done live. Check this out. You got Money Smart, you got Matt Sapala here, and, uh, and uh, as you, many of you know, my background is in the military, and this is my transition career. I thought I was going to get my GI Bill. I thought I was going to do the Illinois Veterans Grant. To, when you enlist in the military in Illinois, you come back to Illinois to pay for your four-year college degree, whether it's Northern Illinois, Southern Illinois, Eastern, uh, Western Illinois, any state-funded college, basically. But uh, the bite of entrepreneurship bit me, and I think that's what many of you are feeling right now. And once you grab, once you grab a, a hold of entrepreneurship and you realize what you're worth, what you're self-worth, what you can be, what you potentially become. You know, you don't look at life and money and uh, your life the same way again. So I'm glad you guys are here in the midst of this uh, pandemic year 2020. And, and guys, we, we just want to let you guys know it's, you know, collectively speaking, uh, we've done much better this year as a company than we did last year. We, uh, if you look at the Money Smart organization, we got a guy who's making more money this year than last year. We, you, saw, you just saw, uh, um, you know, John Mason, he was up here, uh, he just flew up here last Friday. We did some business planning. He's at $800,000 of income. He went from three fifty dollars to $800,000 from 2019 to 2020 this year. All from the pandemic, all from the Zoom and, and, and just working with, with people online. You saw, um, uh, you saw uh, Danny Singson earlier in the year on Zooms. He's, uh, he right now is collectively at $335,000, $340,000 income. You got, uh, you got the Swazos, you got the Hansberries, you got the, uh, the Mackies, they're all over $200,000. Vic and Anna, all, well over $200,000 to $270,000, $280,000 respectively. Uh, so we got m many of our guys. You saw uh, how many guys saw Andre and Jackie Jackson, oh, yeah. right? They were they're from Oak Brook. They were part of our base shop until they relocated last year to uh, to Charlotte, North Carolina. They just crossed over hundred thousand dollars income, in control of their time, freedom, just just happy. And so you know this is what this is what America was built on. This is what uh, a, a lot of us uh, don't see in schools. And uh, I go back to my uh, I go back to my senior year in high school where I was you know those elective classes you take. And say, hey, uh, you're not taking math science. Take a fun class. Okay, let me take Intro to Business 101. You know, that's what they call electives. And uh, I remember for the very first time uh, being exposed to a business person, a, le a legit business person who was actually teaching. And the reason, reason why I was paying attention to it is because Mr. Weiss owned Michael Anthony's Pizza in, in, in Berwyn. And during, during uh, 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 birthdays and holidays, everybody would order from Michael Anthony's Pizza, it's, it's right there on, on, on Ogden, Ogden and, uh, um, on, on uh, Oak Park. Ogden, Oak Park, Ogden and Religion, one of those two, right? And so he owned Michael Anthony's Pizza. And I'm listening to him because he's coming from a position of credibility because he's leading with moral authority because he owns a business. He's not somebody teaching business, he's in business. And I think sometimes, uh, you know, I was, I was talking to my kids because they're about to go to college and they're thinking twice about college now because they realize that they're learning from, prof from professors who talk about academia but they're not doing, right? And, and, and Poppy, do we go to college? I said, baby, I want to let you know, I, I never went to school. And I can't tell you to be financially free and financially independent that college is the route to go to. It's a route, but it's not the only route because your dad took another route, which is the route of entrepreneurship. 
And through this route of entrepreneurs that many of you are on, you're, you're taking steps, you're taking steps, you're taking steps. Along the way, guess what you get to learn? The rules of the money game. You get to learn the rules of money. You get to learn how money works. You get to learn what we're, we're, going, to, we're going to be talking about tonight with the three, three tax buckets and how these tax buckets affect you. Why? What's going on in the economy today? Okay, we have, we've got a Democratic president about to uh, come into office. Well, guys, if you re believe Biden or the president-elect or Trump or not, most likely we're going to have a Democratic pe president. What does he say there in his campaign? I'm going to raise taxes. I've, you know, he's got to raise taxes. And on the same note, he's going to say, also, I'm also going to cut the Trump Cuts Jobs Act. So I'm going to get rid of all the Trump Cuts Act. So what are you expecting? We're also expecting what? Elizabeth Warren's, hey, 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 we need to, what's the Elizabeth Warren's message? We need to pay off student loan debt. Get rid of all of it. Uh, uh, Bernie Sanders, we need to have Medicare for all. So, so all, 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 all these uh, programs for the government to help, here's the biggest question, though. Who's going to pay for it? <laughs> who, who pays for this type of stuff? So if that's what America wants, okay, no problem. Is that, if that's what you voted, okay. Some of us agree with it, some of us doesn't agree with it, but that's the world we live in, that's America, so we have to pay for these things. How are we going to pay for these things? By income taxes. So how you make money and how you earn money is going to be predicated about how much of that money you keep based on how you grow it, okay? And so when we're talking about this, this is, a, this is a, uh, one of the things that we have is the crusade. How many of you guys know about our crusade, right? So we talk about this career, how money works, how money grows. This is part of that presentation. This is part of extend, uh, extended conversations. It's a one-sheeter that you guys can obtain. But I, I'm reading this uh, uh, current article here from Elon Musk, about Elon Musk. It was uh, uh, written uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon, okay? So, so what's going on in California? Is it a low-income tax state or a high-income tax state? High. The highest in the United States, especially for making millions of dollars. So, by the way, we also have a Democratic governor here. His name is Pre Governor... Pritzker, what was he trying to do during the elections with the taxes? He was trying to, he was trying to raise taxes a little higher. By the way, you don't realize it because you guys are in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. But here in Illinois, he was trying to raise taxes. He was, because right now in Illinois, we have what they call a flat tax. So no matter how much money you make, 4.95%, 4, that's what you pay in taxes. It's a flat tax, okay? So no matter how much you make, 4.95% uh, goes to cousin Illinois. Whatever you pay uh, in terms of federal income goes to Uncle Sam. The state income tax was, goes to Cousin Illinois, yes? So what happens is, during the election, he spent $53, $58 million, Pritzker's, of his own money, to campaign to raise income called the progressive tax hike mm -hmm. to let people know that, hey, I'm going to raise taxes in Illinois. We have pension system we can't fund. We got school system we can't fund. We've got to raise taxes. But what, how did Illinois vote? No. no. <laughs> Woo! Because before the vote, before the election, Illinois is saying yes. The funny thing is about that, he spent, what, $53, $58 million of his own money to campaign to raise income tax, progressive state income tax. The biggest donors who, campaign, who, who funded that campaign spent or contributed no more than $1,500. That told you how much Illinois believed in raising <laughs> income tax. So when push came to shove, they really didn't believe it, but they just kind of did it to just, I guess, go along with it, but they didn't go nowhere. But does that mean that the next governor or the next year or the next time it comes up, that he's not going to try some move like this ever again? Probably. So when we're looking at taxes, you know, there's, there's three different ways money grows. This is what we call the three tax buckets. And when I'm, when I'm reading what Elon Musk is in California, because in, in California, if you make more, over a million dollars, 13.3% of your income goes to state income tax. <laughs> you make over a million dollars, 13.3% of your income goes to tax. I'm not talking about federal income tax. We're just talking about the state of California. So here's Elon Musk. Who's Elon Musk the CEO of? Tesla, Tesla and uh, SpaceX and a couple other companies, right? What was his, well, how did he make his money though? What was his claim to fame? He created PayPal. He made, his, he made his billions with PayPal and right there he invested in two different companies. So he says here, uh, uh, Tesla, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has just joined one-fifth of Americans who have done a pandemic move. What are we talking about? After spending most, most of his life in California, Musk has relocated to Texas. Why? Um, he cited the construction of his Tesla factory outside of Austin, as well as SpaceX's uh, planned launch near South Texas village of uh, Boca Chica as a factor in his move. However, he also criticized California's economic environment as another reason. He says, if a team is winning for too long, the state of California, they tend to get complacent. California has been winning for a long time, and I think they took it for granted. So what's happening? In California, who do they lose? Joe Rogan. You guys know Joe Rogan? Yeah. 
He's a, big, uh, a very popular podcast, uh, a fight commentary. He said, peace out, California. He, he moved. Uh, ben Shapiro, he moved out of there, right? Uh, Patrick Ben David, <laughs> he, moved out, he moved out of California years ago. And now, Elon Musk. Here's a challenge with it. Do you think Elon Musk, you think Tesla uh, uh, and his businesses, related business in Silicon Valley, helps the local community? Guess where those jobs are potentially going to go now to? Right? And so, so here's the thing. We have to give... With that being said, in terms of relocation, we have to give an award. I appreciate you deserve some recognition because he's the number one salesman for U-Haul. He's the number one sales for uh, Allied Freight, the number one salesperson for, for uh, Fathers and Sons Moving Company. But the number one salesperson for these moving companies, the U-Haul included, is Governor Newsom. Because <laughs> he's causing everybody to move. And so when you're looking at what's, what's going on, he said, Musk argued that Silicon Valley, home to some of the largest and his most influential companies in the world. What's in, uh, what's in Silicon Valley? Facebook, yeah. Salesforce, Apple, right? This is, this is like the epicenter of entrepreneurship, Silicon Valley. He says, peace out. He says here in his article, it seems that leaving California has been on Musk's mind for a while. He goes, I will owe no home. He sold all four of his homes in California for a combined $62.5 million. He's ready to go. And then he also says, this is the billionaire CEO, it was also says in an article, the billionaire CEO is slated to earn more than $50 billion in stock options. So here's the thing about wealthy people. Do they make money with salary and commissions, or do they make money with dividends and capital gains? Dividends and capital gains. See, it, see, wealthy people, wealthy people, when it comes to salary and it comes to commissions, right, they don't make their money that way. Do they make a little bit? Of course. But it's based on the highest amount of taxes you can be taxed on, which is income uh, salary and, and commission uh, earned income. Where wealthy people make money is on dividends and capital gains. It's the least amount of income that's taxed. So he's slated to earn more than 50 billion in stock options and he would have to pay income taxes on the profits when he exercises them if he remained where? In California. Texas, however, guess how much state income tax is in California? Or, I'm sorry, in Texas. Zero. Zero. There's zero income taxes in Nevada, zero income taxes in, Cal in, uh, in Texas, zero income taxes in Tennessee, Delaware, and Florida. Right? What uh, state? It's a commonwealth, right? <laughs> right? But I know you want to be part of the country, right? <laughs> or be your own country, right? So uh, uh, Musk, however, uh, see, uh, recently surpassed Bill Gates as the second richest man in the world, believe it or not. His net worth now sits at $128 billion after increasing by $100 billion this year. So uh, he's making, making a lot of money. Who's the number one richest man in the world? Amazon, Jeff Bezos. Guess where he lives? Washington. <laughs> right, so, so it kind of tells you what was going on in, in, in California. They're losing their best people. And, and here's the thing, too. Um, recommended book, recommended three-part DVD series that everybody here, if you consider that you want to change your life because of entrepreneurship, you have to either read the book or watch the three-part DVD series called Atlas Shrugged. Atlas Shrugged, okay? Phenomenal story about understanding a big government, the challenges of bureaucracy, the heroes of entrepreneurship, and the opportunities that uh, are creating um, problems and the, uh, the solutions that are created through those issues, and who helps who. Great book, great, book, great, great uh, DVD series to watch, Atlas Shrugged. Why? Because after a while, if people don't take care of their people, people start to leave. And that's what's starting to happen to California. And if Illinois is not, oh, by the way, what's happening in Illinois? Their number one vacated state the last few years is what state? Illinois. Illinois. <laughs> We're starting to lose people. And so when you're, when you're thinking about the three tax buckets, there's three main ways if you're growing your money. I'm not talking about income. I'm talking about income, how to make money, what it was taxed. But when you're talking to clients, when you're talking to folks, when you're talking to people that you serve, when you're talking about people helping people, help people understand the three ways money gets taxed. Three tax buckets called tax now. Tax later, or tax deferred, or tax never, tax advantaged. Let me explain. So, for example, tax now. Let's say you have your money in a bank. You have a bank money in a CD. You have it in a uh, uh, non-qualified uh, brokerage account. Stocks, bonds, mutual uh, brokerage, right? Stocks, bonds, mutual funds. You make money, right? You make money. That year, you also get what? Taxed, right? That's why it's called tax now. You make money, gets taxed. Your salary, you make money now, you get taxed later at the end of the year. You make money in CD, you get a 1099-INT. You, you buy stock, you sell stocks, you get, you, you get a 1099, right? And so um, you make money, which is cool, but you also have to have a, you have a net gain based on how much money you have to pay in tax. 
So the cool part is you're in control of this, it's probably more liquid because it's not wrapped up in a 401k or wrapped up in some form of illiquid investment. But you put your money aside here, you, you grow your money, and then later on that year, you gotta pay tax on it. That's one way to grow money. Second way to grow money, with a lot of people are exposed to, is 401ks, right? So if, you, if you're working for a for-profit company, it's a 401k. If you're working for a non-profit, usually what is, what is it called? 43 b tax shelter and annuity, TSA. You're working for uh, a municipality, a city. So 457, so, uh, sometimes it's called a deferred comp plan. You're working for the federal government, TSP, third savings plan, right? So these things are taxed later. Sometimes we sit down with people. How many times have you sat down with clients who sat down with people and they don't even know how much how, how their 401k works? Oh, all, the time. all the time, right? Yeah. Uh, I, my company's got a salary, benefits, NA, 401k. How does it work? Don't know. <laughs> right? Uh, I got a TSP. Great. Well, how does the A fund work? The B fund work? The C fund? The D fund? What's inside the A fund, B fund, D fund, G fund? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so G, generic. Right? So you're working for the federal government. You don't know what's inside those funds. You don't, right? You got to unpack also what the fees are. So the three things that affect the growth of your money, one of them is taxes. We're discussing that right now. In later, in later uh, conversations, we'll also be discussing fees, cost fees and expenses. Because let's say you make a 10% rate of return, a 5% rate of return, a 3% rate of return. What will reduce that return is the taxes you pay on it, the fees that you get charged, and who knows, I hope that you keep your gains, but what will, uh, will affect your money is also the losses you might experience in future years if you keep your money in something that also is exposed to losses. So there's three things you gotta mitigate, taxes, fees, and losses. Things you have to, mini meaning minimize, or ther therefore eliminate. So when you're growing your money, you have to figure out, is it taxed now, is it taxed later, or is it taxed never? Oftentimes people are exposed to this, why? Because this is at their job. And sadly, sometimes they have un, un, or misplaced loyalty, right? You know, I got loyalty because my job's taking care of me. Now, you got to detach yourself from your job, you, to who pay, pays you, and how you manage your own money. Because you're, this is here, this right here, back in the day, you used to have pensions. Remember those things back in the day? Mm -hmm. And guess what happens? You had a pension, depending on who, what pension you, you work for. I'm not talking about the railroad, but usually the pension, when it comes out, now it's what? Taxed. You, you make money, for, for example, my mother, she worked for the city of Chicago. She worked at Stroger Hospital, otherwise known as Cook County, right? She got her pension now from, from her job. It gets taxed. She gets her Social Security number now. Or Social Security number. She gets her Social Security income. Guess what? That gets taken, some, that gets taxed, and some of it's taken away in uh, uh, Medicare. So oftentimes people say, you know, I'm going to have a pension and Social Security, but guess what nails it? Taxes. And so people say, uh, you know, let me, ask you, let me ask you this question. If you had a choice of when to pay taxes, okay, this is how, you, this is how I share tax later. If you had the choice when to pay taxes, would you rather pay taxes on your penny seeds in the spring or do you want to pay taxes on your million dollar harvest in the fall? If you're going to pay 25%, do you want to pay it on pennies or do you want to pay 25% on millions? Pennies. pennies. So if you're going to uh, tax me, have a choice, tax me now. So that's where this comes in. That's where the tax never, tax advantage comes in. So let me pay taxes now, okay? So therefore, when it grows, no more taxes, right? Taxes, gone. Taxes, see ya, peace out. Because why? I paid it earlier. So right now, in terms of tax environment, compared to the totality of our government and how much they've taxed America, are we in one of the highest income tax brackets? in the history of America, or one of the lowest income tax brackets in the history of America? We are one of the lowest. We are in one of the lowest income tax environments in the entire history of the United States. So, with that being said, where do you think, I'm gonna pay off student loans, I'm gonna put Medicare for all, Medicare for everyone, I wanna have everybody have a, what do you call the UBI, universal basic income, where everybody gets a check no matter what you do? Yeah, you know, have you heard about that universal, yeah. okay? Uh, 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 Andrew Yang was, a, was the Democratic uh, candidate. He said, listen, I want everybody to get a minimal income. I want everybody to have three, you know, two, three, four, five, uh, whatever. 1,500 bucks a month, 2,000 bucks, 3,000 bucks, no matter what. I want everybody, if you have a Social Security in America and you're a United States citizen, everybody's going to have a UBI, a universal basic income. No matter what, you're going to get a check. So let me ask you guys a question. A little off topic. What do you think you handled better the most? Money that you earned, that you worked hard for, or money that's just been given to you? 
Christmas is about to come up, right? Some of you guys got to uh, buy some presents for your kids, your, your grandkids, yeah. right? You're about to buy some presents. No, you worked hard for your money. You went shopping. You love care and attention. You wrap the presents. You know, put the, <laughs> right? You put the, you put the seal on it. You put the tape on it. You put the little bow on it. You put their name on it from Santa, right? You put it in a, you put it in a tree, right? You see their eyes at Christmas. Oh, my God, Santa, no, no, no. Whatever, whatever your morning ritual is, whether you do open presents on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning, you see their eyes light up. Oh, my God, the joy comes out. Okay. What happens to that present, that toy, a week later? Under the couch, broken. Hey, pick up your toys. Put it all away. Why are you saying that? Can you, why are you telling them to take care of it? Because you paid for it. Why don't they take care of it? Because it's not theirs. They have no responsibility. They had no skin in the game. But you did. You see what I'm talking about? Possibly that's the way we, a lot of us see America. So if we're just getting a government check, what do you take care more of? The apartment you rent or the condo you own? The car that you rented or the car that you bought? Even if you are a financier. How many of you guys rented a car? Have you ever rented a car? Before you, before you turn it in, Christian, before you turn it in, did you, did you wash it? Did you take out all the in and out? <laughs> all right? Did you take out the McDonald's or whatever you eat inside the car? Did you vacuum it before you turned it in? Right? Did, by the way, did you dog it out? Did you like hit the... Hit the <laughs> right? But I, bet, I bet you did. You dogged out the car, hit the brakes too, a little too hard, probably a lot more uh, sharper than your own car. You turn it back in. Why didn't you take care of that? Did you, some of you guys are even reluctant to even fill up the gas before you turn it in. Damn it. Why got to fill it up? I'm not you. I fill it up. Why well, do you use it? Why? Because it's your money. You see it going away. So we take, care, we take care of things that we own. That's what makes America, America. Ownership of titles, deeds, right? Those are the things that we own. Ownership. That's why two claps in ownership. That's why we say ownership. Because it's business ownership, life ownership, financial ownership that makes us us. So if you had a choice between paying taxes, do you want to wait to get taxed? This is what America's setting you up for. They say, hey, hey, just go ahead, grow your money, grow your money. Keep contributing, keep contrib- oh, yeah, contributions, contributions. Hey, Awesome. Here, here's the traditional knowledge. Maximize your 401k contributions. That's what the that's your traditional knowledge, right? Sure, no problem. But guess what? It grows, grows, grows. And guess what possibly might happen in the future if today we're in one of the lowest income tax environments in America and they have free college education, free health care, universal basic income, all these different things. Free, 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 free. And America's paying for it. Where do you think taxes are gonna go in the future? Possibly higher. And if it's higher, guess what now? More of your money is exposed to taxes as compared to what people are paying taxes in 2018, 19, and 20. When you retire in 2020, you know, 29 or 2039, 2050, possibly you might be in a higher income tax bracket. And more of your money is exposed to federal income tax. And I'm not even talking about cousin Illinois or cousin California. So here is a big pocket of, wow, America's just kind of setting us up. And here's the thing. Do you think the IRS knows what you have in there? Of course they do. What, what do you think when you, when you fill out your taxes? You, you fill out your 1040? You know what they ask you to do? How much money did you put in your, in your IRA, your individual IRA, your individual retirement account? Because why? When you roll over your 401k, guess what it goes into? Into an IRA. You leave your, your nonprofit job. Guess what this 403, 403b goes into? Your IRA. Your 457. IRA. Your TSP. IRA. Hmm. They, do they know what you got in your IRA? Yes. And they have to do what they call this ERISA testing. Every year, if you have a 401k, if, for example, if you have your own uh, business, you have to go with what they call ERISA testing. You have to have a, 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 an auditor to come in. They audit what you have in your 401k. Who's contributing to the 401k? Is it what they call top heavy? Or is more of the execs put in there, putting more money in there? Is the uh, lower income uh, earning people that a company putting money? Is it too top heavy? Because otherwise we got to disclaim it. We got to get rid of it. It's called ERISA testing. Guess what they're doing? Reporting it. So they pretty much know what's in these plans. And guess what they want to do? Unlock this in the form of income taxes to pay for all the federal stuff down the road. That's what the future of America is banking on. Now, if you had a choice, though, would you rather pay tax now and say, let me get away from all this or, or out for this? That's why America needs you. That's why we need to educate people on a different choice because oftentimes people say, this is all I know. But there's other options. Out there. So what are these things here? You got your mis- you mis- you mis- uh, municipal bonds. What else you got? Roth IRAs, 
What else? Yeah, life insurance. Under IRS code 7702, you can grow your money, you can access your money, you can transfer money without paying a dime in tax. Roth IRAs, you can pay taxes now, but down the road you, pay a, you don't pay a dime in tax. So all these different things that a lot of people in America just don't know. And that's why you and I are in business today, to educate people on these different things. So going back over here, taxes is a big reason why a lot of people don't get ahead to where they want to go. They might earn a rate of return. They might have earned a decent rate of return, gets ahead of inflation. But they have to pay a lot of money in taxes. What also drags that down is also fees, cost fees and expenses. For, by the way, yeah, do you think this is managed for free? Do you think somebody's doing this out of kindness and goodness of their nonprofit heart? Of course not. And somebody's getting money management fees. Somebody's making fees. But if you look at all the lists of all the fees that these companies charge, and a lot of people just don't know about it, you'd be shocked. And so somebody said, well, Matt, is there fees inside Roth IRAs? Is there fees inside uh, life insurance? Of course there are. But if you look at what you get for what you pay, then that's what you have to analyze. So if people are going to, pay, if people are going to be paying for something, you have to figure out what they're paying for, what they're paying and what they're paying for. And last but not least, we mentioned this in the Five Gotchas of Money, uh, 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 Five Gotchas of Money uh, workshop, is one of the things that, that, that uh, sabotage your income and sabotage your money is when your money is exposed to Losses. So, for example, Hector, if I lost 10% this year, what do I need in terms of rate of return this coming year to make sure I'm back to square one? I need more than 10%. Yeah, you need 20. You need, you need 12. Two. You need 12. If you lost 25% of your money, you need, right, 32%. If you lost 50% of your money, you need a 100% to get you back to square one. And two years just went by with you making zero money. <laughs> Go ahead, Ali. Um. Do you, do you want to add, is there any contribution limits on the Roth IRA versus life insurance? One more time, there's a, there's a Harley Davidson up here, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there any contribution limits on Roth IRAs versus life insurance? Yeah, okay, so, okay, cool. So the, the question is, is there any contribution limits? So inside 401ks, yes, there's a limit of how much money you can put here. Inside a properly structured life insurance contract, there's no limit because it's based on the amount of death benefit you have inside the policy. So if you want to put more money inside a, life a properly structured life insurance contract used for uh, the, the, not only the death benefit, but also to take advantage of the rule 7702, you just have to increase the amount of death benefit you have in life insurance you're applying for so you can shove all the cash. So instead of saying, I, I, I don't want to just put, uh, I don't know, $5,000 in it, I want to put uh, $10,000 in it in one year, you just got to increase what? Yeah. The amount of death benefit. But you can still stuff that cash inside there according to the rules of 7702. The fancy rules are TEFRA you know, DEFRA and TAMRA, right? These are the fancy rules you have, you got to buy, what, 1982, 84, and 88. These are just fancy laws that you'll eventually learn over time how to properly structure a life insurance contract to maximize cash accumulation growth. But these right here, there's a limit on how much money you can put in. If you're over a certain age, you can add more money. But guess what it comes out when you start pulling this money out for income? Yeah. Taxes. So let's say you need $100,000, okay? And we're at a 33% you know, thir you know, 34, 35% income tax. I'm just talking about federal. You actually got to pull out 150. You got it? Mm -hmm. Pay the tax of the 50, mm -hmm. so therefore, you, so you can net 100,000. Tax never, tax advantage. If you need 100,000, guess what you pull out? $100,000. Because why? Because you pay the taxes in the beginning. So in other words, what happens to the other $50,000 that you didn't have to pull out over here? What happens to that? It contains an increase in value. Over time, so instead of having unnecessarily pay, take it out to pay income tax or whatever federal income tax rate is 20, 30, 40 years down the road, you allow it to still grow and compound and earn a rate of return. So this is a basic fundamental of how to win the money game and understand where to have, and where to have your money grow. Now, what Christian was saying, that this business literally saved my mother's life. Do you know why he said that for some of you that are here that are new? Because he structured something like this similar to, for his mom. And so, uh, what, a couple years into it, after her owning the policy? Eight months. Eight months after her owning the policy, in October of that year, of all months, she comes down with breast cancer. And she fought through it, fought through it, fought through it, survived it. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, guess what he was getting? He was getting harassed by his friend. Ah, you got left AT&T for being insurance. Ah, you did it. You sound life insurance now. You're not selling AT&T. Well, you go back to do physical therapy. Yeah, yeah. You guys help out my mom? You help my mom? You help her with the house? Deliver food? Help I clean up around the house? No, 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 no. Okay. Guess what? I, so I delivered to my mom. I delivered to her a living benefit. 
I gave her a check. So therefore, she can pay all for medical bills. What did you do for my mom? For everybody harassing me. Because <laughs> we did it as mom. We were thinking that it was going to be structured for this. But guess what? Life happens. Life happened. And guess what? Financially prepared. Did she, uh, was she in line at the uh, Section A? Was she in line at, uh, at WIC? Was she in line at, uh, you know, you know I-Link? She wasn't a burden on to anybody. Why? Because she took financial responsibility. And you wonder why the government allows these things to happen. Because here's what let insurance does. The insurance has an arrangement with, with, with the government. The insurance, insurance, the insurance industry says, give us certain tax benefits so we can make a financial package that incentivizes citizens in America to take personal responsibility for themselves. So therefore, they're less lenient on the government, and they're less lenient on the government to allow the government to do what they need to do with the tax income, and they don't have to ask for money when emergencies does happen. We're going to give them significant, we're going to give them significant tax advantages to do so. Guess who knows about these tax advantages? The wealthy. The wealthy. Guess who doesn't know about these, uh, these tax advantages? The multicultural middle class. We don't. That's why we're needed out there. That's why you're in business. That's why there's a crusade for us to go out there and educate America, at least expose them. It's up to them to say, okay, I'm going to do something about it. But at least expose them to the conversation and allow them to help themselves and make an educated decision. You know, what happened is, what I learned today is that I paid thousands of dollars to learn how to invest, and they did, never taught me about tax advantage. They would stop me at tax later. So I never got the advantage. And I didn't even pay for this class today. <laughs> and I, I lost all thousands of dollars today. I would say this, I paid thousands of dollars for this class today. Amen. And if you can read this, <laughs> You're way ahead, bro. Appreciate you guys. All the way from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This is the Britos. Or burrito. <laughs> well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. Love to know your feedback. And if you haven't done so already, please watch this video, The Four Homes of Money, to continue to put the puzzle piece together of brightening up your financial future for 2021. And for our comment contest, again, we are giving away a free shirt to the top three people who comment that answers this question in our comment section below for our comment contest. So here we go. So fill in the blank below. Millionaires consider the tax buckets of tax now, tax later, and tax blank. One more time. Millionaires consider the tax buckets of tax now, tax later, and tax blank. Fill in that blank in the comments section below. Well, this is another episode of Vlogmas 2020. Again, we're doing an episode every day from December 1st to the 24th of December. And if you've been getting value from this, you've been learning some things, please drop your thoughts and comments and feedback in the comments section below. I love the dialogue we got going on back and forth right now. So with that being said, guys, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever you got going on here this time of the year. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.